And we're really at the beginning, so um, this, is, this is just the start. We are thrilled to be at this stage. You know, this has been something that's been in plans probably for about two years to be at this point. There's been a lot that's gone on for this trust, been lots of different mergers, and we're really very large. And that picture there sort of demonstrates the geography that we cover, which is huge. And uh, we cover lots of inpatient services, community services, uh, mental health, physical health, addiction, brain injury. The largest provider of learning disability services and one of three high secure services too. Lots of challenge to think about how would we do these guides. 171 sites, 309 teams and 11,000 staff. Wow, how on earth would we do this? I, I wanted to mention as well that really pleased to be here this week in particular and do the launch in Autism Acceptance Week. Because again, if we think about it, and it'll, and it'll be expressed during, during the session, the access guides look at things from a pan-disability approach. So yes, it is about wheelchairs, but it's about loads of other things as well. And it's about thinking really about our, our environments and what difference that makes to people and whether it makes things accessible. At the moment, we don't have very many patient stories, but those will come you know, over time. But in terms of thinking about the impact it's had with our colleagues, already we know that our occupational health colleagues have been able to use the guides as part of their assessment process. Um, health and safety are actually finding them just useful on a daily basis. And I've already sort of heard colleagues be using the guides to help them go to different meetings or different places that they're not very familiar with. So that leads me to bring um, Amanda to come and talk to us. Thanks so much, Alison. So I'd just like to formally welcome everybody today. We've got lots of guests, internal staff, external stakeholders, commissioners, etc. So really glad to see so many faces here today. I've learned something new today already this afternoon in terms of what I can look at to access because I've been one of those many frustrated uh, carers who's gone somewhere with my father who's deaf. I've gone to the cinema and the loop system, it's not working or I've taken my mum somewhere and the environment isn't suitable as my mum has dementia. So absolutely, uh, I can really already see the benefit of a daughter in this space, let alone as a colleague. Now, unfortunately, our executive director of comms and estates isn't here today. Elaine said the partnership gives an independent and formed assessment of our sites, which anyone using our services can view before visiting. We are pledged to continue improving accessibility and the work done here shows that we're committed to being transparent about our locations and how people experience accessing them. So a really important point going back to what Alison said in terms of getting that loop of feedback and getting lots of experience because that's going to inform us to see what modifications and adjustments and also in any future builds that we have that we build that feedback into those future developments. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being part of our journey to date and being part of the journey. We're going to make things better for all in the future. So without further ado, I'm delighted to welcome Anna. Thank you for making the journey today to come up. So can we welcome Anna in the tradition? Um, so Access Able as an organisation, uh, we've actually been going a really long time. We were set up back in May 2000 by our chair and founder Gregory Burke and really the idea for Access Able's website and app originally started with Gregory's own personal experiences. He spent four years in a mixture of hospital and rehab having acquired a brain illness when he was 16 um, and four years later he went home and wanted to go out and do everyday stuff so meet friends, have a coffee, get back into education and it was at that point that he suddenly felt disabled uh, by the multiple barriers that he was facing, whether that was a physical barrier, like a step into the place he wanted to go, um, or someone's attitude talking to his dad rather than to him. Um, but also what he found was a complete lack of information about the accessibility of those places that he needed or wanted to go. Um, and when he looked on websites or leaflets or rang up and asked, the absolute best he found was a phrase like, we're wheelchair friendly or we have disabled access. And he said, well, that doesn't answer any of my questions about what the reality is going to be. In fact, I've just got more questions now 
So as an organisation, it set us on a real journey. So I joined Accessable in 2004, and certainly the information we collect about something like an accessible toilet has got to have gone up fourfold, because um, we've been really fortunate that we had lots of disabled people and people with access needs have fed back to us over the years, so we can really develop our service. And so in terms of our work with the Trust, I would have to say it's such a huge geographical area, it's been, been a real challenge and it's been a, it feels a great team effort. I know there's been so many people who have helped us along the way, particularly um, Ellen has, has had some great feedback and support from, from the Estates team trying to gain us access, understandably, to some challenging sites and make sure that our surveyors can get through the door. So in terms of the assessments, we've carried out and created um, access guides to 132 different patient-facing sites and services. And what we're trying to do is create a guide for each of those services rather than necessarily the building. So we want it to reflect the patient journey, so from getting on site, getting to that particular service and the facilities within it. Um, and that work is still ongoing, so there's a couple of buildings still to survey in May that will be getting, um, getting done imminently. And then all of that information is published on the Accessable website and our app. And one of the key things for us is obviously keeping that up to date, as Amanda mentioned. It's really crucial that if you're having information to enable people to access sites, that that's kept up to date. And generally for all of our trusts, we work out what is the best way of keeping us in the loop. But essentially we often do a monthly phone call to estates and facilities colleagues to understand what upcoming changes are happening. And for anything big, we send our surveyors back out to reassess it. I'm Ellen. Just to reiterate what everyone's saying, obviously it's fantastic to be here, to be at this stage. It does feel like it's a long time coming and there have been challenges, but who doesn't love a challenge? Um, and obviously I'd love to thank Alison, Cara, John, everybody for being so eager to get this project to where it is. What you'll find on the homepage are two search bars. So we've created them to work in a very similar way to Google. So they're elastic, they're intuitive. So when you start typing in the first three letters, um, suggestions will start to appear. So depending on the way that you want to use the website, um, you might have an appointment somewhere or you might want to use a service you know where you need to go. You can simply type the name of, where, of the site. Um, and I've typed in the life rooms. We've got the four that we have surveyed. Um, and you can simply click on the one that's, that's most convenient for you. Alternatively, you can uh, look for the trust's information. So again, simply typing in the first few letters, we've got Mersey Care NHS Foundation Trust that comes first in that list. And if you click through, that will lead you to this page here, which is the landing page that we've created for Mersey Care. Um, we create one of these for every single partner that we work with, and they are the hub where all the access information sits behind. So you've got everything in one place. So if you scroll down on that page, uh, we've just got a bit of a welcome text about the trust, some additional images of some sites that we've surveyed. And in about in the middle of the page, you have um, a headline. It says access able partners in this area. Because what's key to remember is that the information for Mersey Care doesn't sit in isolation. We do work with other local authorities, uh, at, at other trusts, uh, universities. So you might be accessing one of the services here at Mersey Care, but you might just actually want to explore your local community, pop for a coffee, something to eat, and we've got plenty of access guides in Knowsley, Warrington, um, Cheshire. And further down the page, this is where we start to see the information for Mersey Care. And there's a few different ways of coming across the information. There's a search bar here with that green background, and that search bar is filtered just to show you Mersey Care's sites and services. So again, if you've got an appointment somewhere, you know the name of where you need to go, you can type that in in a search. Or you can have a look at our featured access guide section, so that just features some um, of Mersey Care's main sites, like Clockview Hospital, Broad Oak Unit. Or alternatively, at the bottom of the page, we have a classification button. For instance, if you want to access a service where it's offered at different sites, whether that's podiatry, a walk-in centre, um, you can simply click on one of those buttons. So if we click on medical centres and clinics, this is the search results page that you will get. So a list of all the access guides in alphabetical order to the left and to the right, a map with access able pins to show you exactly where all of those sites are located. 
And what you can do from this page is filter your search even further to suit your own accessibility requirements. So you can do that quite simply by clicking on the accessibility symbols button that's towards the top left of the screen. And that will show you this drop down which shows you all of our different accessibility symbols. We've got 33 altogether and they're for things like accessible toilets, blue badge parking, um, braille, um, assistive listening, stoma friendly facilities, facilities for assistance dogs. Um, and you can tick as many as you like and apply them to your search and the website will just filter by those symbols and only show you the, the sites that have those things available. So now on to an example of an access guide itself. From the very top of the page, you've got in bigger letters the name of the site, contact information, the full address and some images from outside. You've also got a button that says view accessibility symbols and if you click on that, a pop-up will appear and it will show you which accessibility symbols we've allocated to that venue. So it just gives you a brief overview. But for people really looking for that detail, um, you just scroll down and this is our this is this is the access guide really. So the left hand side we've got sections that really demonstrate a methodical journey through a venue, actually to the site that you need to go to, into the building, to the service that you need to access and back out the building again. Um, so we start with a getting here section because we know that actually access probably begins at home and you're you're planning if you need to go to an appointment or, or to seek a service and we tell you how to get there if you are arriving by car or by public transport. And we also link to public transport websites, just anything that, could be, um, anything that could be useful for the user. And of course, if you are arriving by car, you need to know about the parking situation. For instance, if you're an ambulatory wheelchair user, um, you can decide whether that distance is manageable, which, which aid that you might need on that, on that day. Um, surveyors will also assess any dropped curbs, any drop-off points, um, and the surface of the car park as well. And this section is for uh, the front entrance. You might think that there's only so many photos that you can take of the doorway, but actually it's really important to um, actually take photos of the approach to the entrance, um, as well as any additional fixtures that you've got. So it might be um, an intercom, a bell that you might you have to press before you enter. But once again, anything that's there is clarified in the detail. So we find out the width of the doorway. Uh, we find out if there is a bell, buzzer, an intercom, how high that is from, from the ground. If you're a wheelchair user, will you be able to access that? Um, also, if, if the doors are push pad operated, um, if there's step-free access into the building as well. Once you're inside, um, you're met with a reception area. So our surveyors will take photos of the seating that's available, as well as the reception desk. Um, perhaps the photos give you an idea of manoeuvring space uh, throughout that area. And the text will tell you how high that reception desk is, if there's a lowered section, if you are a wheelchair user, but also information that could help you if you have a sensory impairment, but also thinking about neurodiversity. So what are the lighting issues <coughs> like in that reception area? Um, is there a hearing assistance system? If so, what type of system is it? And importantly, does it work? And are staff trained to use the system? Then we have a getting around section. Again, photos to show you the corridors that you might have to go down to find your consultation or treatment room. You find out whether there's step-free access throughout the building, what the flooring is like throughout, if there are any shiny surfaces. What's the signage and wayfinding like? Is it dementia friendly? Also, if there's a designated safe space, does the building play any background music? And again, is there a hearing assistance system? Those things actually might vary as you, as you go through the building. This is a, a consultation or treatment room. And what our surveyors will do is survey each type of consultation room. Um, so if there are a few that are pretty much exactly the same, we'll say how many of those types. We find out that there's six just like this, this is treatment room G21, um, and we state whether there's level access into that room, um, whether what the seating is like in there, are there chairs with armrests, or is it a chair without armrests, um, is there a bed, um, is it manoeuvrable, is it adjustable as well, um, again, any permanently fixed furniture, just so you know exactly what to expect before, if you've got an appointment, again, it's just to reduce that anxiety. 
Your treatment or consultation room might be on a different floor, so you need to know how to access it. Uh, so we do survey the, the stairs, but of course we also cover the lift, and you'll find out the exact dimensions of the lift, uh, whether there's a 150 by 150 manoeuvring space as you exit the lift, um, whether there's a mirror to aid reversing out of the lift if you're a wheelchair user, um, if you have uh, a visual impairment, are there any tactile marking, is there an audible announcer, um, if you have a hearing impairment, are there any visual floor indicators to tell you where you are. And the most detailed section of the access guide that you'll come across is the accessible toilet, so our surveyors do spend a lot of time in the, to in the toilet, um, very glamorous job. Again, photos are taken so you can see the colour contrast, all the fixtures and the fittings in the accessible toilet, the approach. But once again, everything is in the detail below. So we break it up into sections. Location and access. Whereabouts is that facility located? How far is it from the entrance? Is it well signposted? Is there step-free access? What way does the door open? Does, is a radar key required? Toilet features. So what are the dimensions of that facility? What side is the transfer space on? How big is that transfer space? Is the flush on the same side? Drop down rails, do they, colour, do they contrast well from the back wall? And additional fixtures look at other things other than the toilet. So the mirror, the basin, the soap dispenser, uh, the hand dryer, how high all of those are from the floor. And we do also cover the standard toilets. We break it down into similar sections just for ease of use for you. Um, so you can expect to find similar kind of information there. And I just wanted to show you a couple of different features that we have available on the website. The first being the easy read. So at the top right of every access guide that we've created for Mersey Care, you'll find this easy read toggle and that can be toggled on and off as desired. And what that will do is strip all the detail from the guide, but the core pieces of information will remain, as well as the photos at the top. So this is the same accessible toilet section that we saw that had all of that detail, but now only the key pieces of information are being displayed. Um, so maybe if you don't require the level of detail, you can just view the whole access guide in this way. Another functionality that I find really useful um, is the ability to search within an access guide. So you can search a word or a phrase. You might only be looking for one aspect of accessibility. So I've typed in lighting as an example, and it, the access guide will tell you how many times the word or phrase appears in each section, and very helpfully it will highlight the word itself. So you can very quickly start to understand whether that, that service is going to be accessible for you. And as already mentioned, we do also have a mobile app. We've, we've found from studies and surveys that we've done that the majority of disabled people, carers, end users would expect to find NHS accessibility information on that relevant trust website. Um, so as we launch today, we already have accessible buttons um, on every single site page. So here's an example for Thornton Health Centre. Got, we've got the information, how you can contact them, and underneath site accessibility information, a button. And if you click on that button, it will lead you through to this page, so you're exactly where you need to be. There's no need to search on the Accessable website, it's right there. And just to show you another example, the button is always in the same place. Again, you can expect to find it um, right underneath the Contact Us, and it links through to Bed House. So I hope that has been a helpful demonstration of the website. Thank you so much for coming.